Hi everybody, this is Brian <clears throat> at 3dmetaltools.com. Um, wanted to continue with my um, build of Shieldman. Um, this is part three. Um, again, I may not record the entire build process because this is a pretty complex model. We're already, you know, f I don't know, three or four hours in. And if I'm going to record everything, we might end up with, heck, a 10 hour video. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, in any case, I'm going to keep uh, keep on, keeping on, I guess is the way I would say it, with Shield Man. Again, here's here's the, the box. It really is looking cool. So let's keep rolling. Um, we are now at this step where we're going to, I have, I have the torso attached to the waist looking really sharp by the way it's awesome and then we are going to take kind of these um, these pieces here that are in this shape and we're going to roll them into what will you know resemble a hose so it's actually the exact same portion as up here that is attached to the mask now you'll notice that now I didn't the the beginning of this whole model I didn't get on a video, uh, so I didn't I didn't record building the head. But this hose right here I actually did in the in the opposite direction and I did it on purpose. Now when I say opposite direction I mean that the engraved surface is supposed to be um, to the inside. So th these this texture, the 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 straight lines. Um, they're actually probably engineered to be bend lines to make it easier to bend in in that direction But it's also going to work in both directions Anyways, I felt that it would look better to have those textured Lines across this hose rather than bending them the opposite way and it would be shiny I kind of like the contrast of that so I elected to do it on the helmet and I'm also going to do it on this portion where these hoses connect from the torso to the waist so I'm going to actually be rolling in the opposite direction. Now this is kind of a complicated setup here. We're going to take this and roll each one almost individually into a uh, uh, in, 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 into cylinders. The way that I would recommend doing this is probably I'm going to use a cylinder piece. Uh, this this would be called a pin gauge or if you just have a set of drills that's going to work just as fine as well. I'm, I'm going to say, I mean if I measure that up, I'm going to think that I'm going to start with 125 and see how that works and then I'm guessing that 100 is going to be better. But let's go ahead and get to work on this. Um, it will be a series of probably round nose pliers and these cylinder forms to get this to be right. So it's going to be a lot easier if I approach all of these ones at once, and I think I'd like to do that. So I'm going to bend as many as I can at one time. I don't really want to get into doing this um, all individually with pliers. I'd rather get them close, then I can take round nose pliers and get closer and then clean them up. At least that's my plan. That's how I did the first round. And I can tell already that this is not going to be the right size cylinder. I'm definitely going to want to use the, uh, I think this is 100 or a tenth of an inch in diameter. I might even be going smaller than that. I am. So this is 750. So those ones are pretty well straight, so I can do them all at one time with a cylinder gauge like this or a cylinder piece. Now the rest, this is where round nose pliers are going to be awesome. So I can take the round nose pliers, and because they are round, of course, I can essentially just use them. And I, when I squeeze, I won't flatten anything because the surface is round. So that's perfect for shaping these things right here that are more hard to reach. You might have to plan your attack carefully though because if I do this one right now that I'm holding right now 
then that blocks access to the ones behind it. So I'm grabbing this one, just kind of bending it out of the way so I can get my round nose pliers in here, start to bend it a little at a time, and then finish up the shape. And then if I am so inclined, I can also take my cylinder gauge and kind of press it inside there to perfect that form. And same thing, I'm going to bend it up a little bit just to get my pliers access. Start bending this. Pretty good. Start bending this. See, this would be very, very difficult to do with chain nose pliers because chain nose pliers have flat jaws and um, the round nose pliers have a big advantage because, well, of course they're round, I already said that, but you can also choose what area you want to bend from. So if I want to grab the piece here, oh, sorry, if I want to grab the piece here at the base of the, of the, of the cone form or the base of the piece, then I can make a pretty wide angle with it. I don't want to do that with this, so I'm going to go about in the middle for the beginning of this. And as I bend, now I don't have room to go any deeper than this, but if this were an individual piece out on its own, I could just put this round nose pliers at whatever diameter I wanted to based on the amount of taper that I have. But the biggest advantage is not necessarily that, because you can use round nose pliers just like a cone form. You could just take this jaw and just and form a cone around that jaw alone. The big advantage though is that the jaws are not flat and so that means that you can squeeze and get a good grip on something and manipulate something and bend it without flattening it. If I were doing this with chain nose pliers, I think it would be a lot more difficult because I would need to keep a very delicate grip to keep from flattening the piece. It would really be kind of a pain, if you ask me. I wouldn't want to attempt it, but these are coming together pretty well with the round nose pliers. Now I'm going to go back, have a look, and just make sure that you know everything is pretty well evenly spaced. I could probably get a little gap in here, but that's that's pretty good. I like how that turned out. That's actually quite accurate. So combination of using a cylinder gauge or a cylinder form, which could also be a drill bit, of course, and round nose pliers makes pretty easy work out of a very complex piece. Um, so is it time to do both of these? No, I'm only doing one. Why am I only doing one? It says put in part number 34. Oh, you know what? Um, I'm betting that you need to get the arm. They're, they're, they're going to focus on the other side. They're going to focus on the hose that goes on the other side of this guy once the um, arm is in place and once I start working on the other side. So I am going to actually take my 750 cylinder form and I'm going to put it on my knolling board so here's how I organize my pieces you know on my knolling board I'm gonna put it on number 34 so that I remember that the cylinder thickness or the cylinder diameter that I used in the previous step is that one uh, might remember I might not but that's what I'm going to do so let's go ahead and get this into place one thing that occurred to me you can see that this, actually it's very difficult to see, but this is going to attach to a tab that folds out of the body. Right at, oh wait, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm wrong on that. I thought that this was actually one of those tabs that you fold out like we did here on part number, you know, this piece that goes on the waist. I thought that it had to fold out because Here's where it, it attaches to a, a tab that you unfold down here, but
but it doesn't up here. So, um, that's interesting. I thought that I missed a step and I needed to do a fold to get that out. But let me get good magnification and take another look at this just in case I'm wrong, but, huh. Yeah, that's, that's a very complicated attachment, actually. And it also needs to tuck in behind this rocket or this thruster. Let me take a close look here. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. I got it. Okay, shoot. I was worried there for a second. It actually attaches all the way back here on the side of this. So it actually does attach to a, a tab that you, uh, a slot that you unfold. So right here, way in the back, and then all the way down to here. So that does make sense now. Okay, so that, that makes me feel a lot better because I had no idea how I was going to... Basically, what I was seeing, very... <laughs> I don't know that my camera can possibly pick this up, but right here underneath this rocket, there's an engraving, a decorative engraving that looks just like... Maybe you can see it right there. It looks just like... Uh, and open uh, a slot, but it's not. So, all right, I was looking at the wrong spot. So now, uh, oh, by the way, one thing, this entire build, it's really been bothering me that these thrusters back here had to be splayed. I, I went online and found some images, and every version that I've seen of this has these thrusters splayed. So I'm confident that that's how it's supposed to be. And so I'm feeling much better about that. I was a little bit worried. So at this point, it looks to me like attaching this underneath this thruster is going to be the more difficult point to establish. So I'm going to get that in place first. And then I think I'm, I'm, I'm confident that my fit is going to be good. I'm testing one side and then I'm very, very close to the other, so I feel good about going in here now with my... I'm using very, very tiny tipped chain nose pliers, so I have these long chain nose pliers that have a very, very small tip on them because nothing else is going to reach into this little tiny crevice. And I might also... you know, here's how I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to reach in here, get that tab, and bend it out a little bit. Always be careful when you're using a craft knife with a painted model especially because uh, scratches are so painfully evident on painted models. Uh, and this red is definitely no exception. It looks like... did I get it? I don't believe I did. Wow, this is a really tight spot. I'm going to try I'm going to try the needle nose pliers. So here's the chain nose pliers with a very very small tip. This is needle nose pliers with not quite so small of a tip, but a much lower uh, a much um what what I want to say, thinner profile so it can penetrate um farther um and it has a it can fit into better spots. So very very difficult, but I Got it. Okay. Now I'll get this into place, and I can tell already this is going to be a spot of the model that I'm going to have to be very, very careful of throughout the, the rest of the build because it will not want to react well to getting bumped and jostled and getting messed up. So I've got my chain nose pliers. I'm going to bring this tab out a little bit. Chain those pliers. I'm going to try and get this tab into the slot. Let me get really good magnification. I hope my head isn't in the way, but it might have to be for this because this is a really tight spot. Okay, so I got it in, but I don't have a twist on it yet. So it's in there. I'm going to bring the exacto knife in. I'll try and keep my head out of the way. I'm going to bend it up so that my pliers can get access to it. I'm going to go to the needle nose pliers. Whew. 
and give it a twist. That was a very cool detail on this model, but also that was a pain. Both spots were a difficult location to access and very, very difficult to get properly hooked up here. But hey, we have a tube attached. As I said earlier, I'm sure that this is going to have to be something that as I'm handling this model throughout the rest of the build, I'm going to have to be very careful of this. Actually, when it comes to put, putting the next one on, I might consider waiting until the very end if possible. I don't see why I couldn't do that and unless the arm gets in the way, which the arm might, but I will consider whether or not this is a part that can go on at the end of the build for the next parts because as I'm handling this and excuse me, as I'm handling this and moving this model around, that's going to be complex to keep that um, I must be very careful that I don't bump that. You know, the tab breaks there, then I'm pretty much in trouble. So, anyways, looking good. All right, so I am done with a, that major step. So basically, I have the torso, the waist, these rockets, and whatever this is on the back all attached, and then I have this hose that I just completed right here. Now I'm moving on to an arm. So whole new assembly. Um, usually when I get to a spot like this in my builds, I like to get all my tools back into place and get them organized where they're supposed to be. Um, that's my little thing. It just kind of drives me crazy if my tools are everywhere. So, um, so part number 35, and it looks like it does need to be very specific here looks like there's a couple spots where I have to pay very close attention. There's some exclamation points here. So basically the exclamation points have to do with making sure that I have this tab that folds out, that I have that on the right side because I'll be attaching another one of those hoses that I just created onto this. So let's go ahead with part number 36, which is this little tiny deal. And my cone forms will probably be perfect for this, but I'm guessing that this might require something more, even more severe than 77 degrees. So if I look at, again, this cone forms, uh, for those that are haven't seen these yet, uh, at 3D Metal Tools, I manufacture these cone forms along with some other tools that we sell. And uh, they're basically cones of various degrees. And then there's a reference sheet that slides into the base. So you have these cones on the stand with the reference sheet stuck away for whenever you need it. And then the way that you use this is you just simply take your part up here and size it up to the angle. Now, I think you can see that 77 isn't really perfect for this, but it's the, the tightest or the narrowest angle cone that I have and that I offer. Um, and it'll get me there. Um, I do have another idea though that might work as well and I'll show you a little piece of tooling that might help out with this also. But I will start with the 77 degree cone. And let me check my instructions, make sure I'm not doing anything dumb. Um, the non-engraved side needs to be out. So I'm going to form this around here. I'm going to make it a little bit rough, it doesn't really matter doesn't have to be a perfect form yet. Um, get the tab through, chain nose pliers, and now I'm going to flatten with round nose pliers. The reason I'm using round nose pliers is because they are round. Um, chain nose pliers have flat inner jaws and they will take a part like this and if you apply pressure it will flatten. And you don't want it to flatten of course. Now it's very far from perfect at this point. I think you can see it's more oval and oblong, but I can take the cone form and even though 77 isn't the perfect match for this, I can still use it to get everything very close on this end. And I can also turn around and use this end. So even though it's not a perfect angle match, I can still use both ends to coax it into a perfect shape, as you can see. Now, I could also have done this with my jeweler's anvil, which will do basically this. Actually, the jeweler's anvil looks like it's a better, sh a better fit. So the 
end of the jeweler's manual is actually perfect for that and that worked out really well so that that could have that could have been used easily here a third option with something this small maybe it will work actually that's very close but don't forget that basically your round nose pliers are cones so it, these ones aren't large enough to really form this but if you have small cones now I can always do this though you know if I if I wanted to I can always do this manually and just kind of squeeze 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 and move it all around that way but no no need to uh, but just remember you do have cones on your round nose pliers basically that's what each jaw is so 36 is looking good we'll move on to part number 35 And part number 35 has the number one facing. Part number 35 has the number one facing to the narrow end of this cone. It says to do a twist. Um, but, hmm, this is interesting. All right, so it looks like if I keep the number one oriented vertically, there's four slots and I'm only engaging two. Oh, so, okay, I see. There's a very tiny, it's very hard to see, but there's inner slots here. So there's um, a set of slots on the outside and a set of slots on the inside, and it's telling me that a twist is good. In this situation, I'm sure, if we're looking at this part right here, I'm sure that eventually there's going to be a part that's going to attach to the outside of part number one. In other words, here it is right there, this cylinder. I, I, I know for sure it is. So when I twist these tabs, I know that a cylinder is going to fit over top of those tabs in the next few steps. So I'm going to do a twist and then a slight bend inward to make sure that these tabs get out of the way of that cylinder uh, or, or the, 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 the piece that's coming in. If they get, if they twist, and then they start to spill out into these the, the space of these slots, then you could have interference as you're trying to get the next part on, and you don't want that. So this is in place. I'm going to set this aside, and now we're gonna move on to this little sub-assembly, and it's part number 37. And same thing, I don't think that I need to gauge this up with my with my reference sheet on the cone forms, I think that I can safely just go ahead and grab my 77 degree cone, see where I am. Maybe it'll clean up nicely on the um, on the uh, anvil, but yes, this is not the right cone form. I need one that is has a lot more steepness to it, one that I don't own, but I can do it on the jeweler's anvil. So watch what I do here. I can um, kind of take these pieces here and just form them around the horn of the anvil and make this look really nice. I don't want to get to the point where I'm going to seal these off, or uh, sir, where I, I don't want to do the full bend yet because I want to bend these tabs inward. There's two tabs here and I want to bend them inward and the reason is because I will want those to be uh, invisible. I don't want those on the outside. I think that'll look pretty unattractive. So anytime that you have two tabs that are both going to go into uh, two slots that are in the same plane, always bend them at the same time. So I'm gonna grab my flat nose pliers, grab both of them, and bend them both inward at the same time. The reason that I do this at the same time is because I know for sure that they're on the same plane. They're on the same angle. Um, I actually am, those flat nose pliers weren't ideal. I'm gonna come in with these round nose or needle nose and just kind of press to clean them up a little bit. So now I'm going to grab a hold of this portion here and bring it in and fold it. And notice which pliers I'm using. I'm using the round nose pliers because if I used anything that has flat jaws, when I squeeze, I would be flattening the piece. Don't want to flatten this piece. Um, and this will probably come together looking kind of rough anyways, but I'm not too concerned because I have 
all kinds of tools for making this form look better than what it does right now. Um, probably the anvil is going to be the most useful, but I will check and see what the cone form might do for me also. Okay, so I have both tabs in here. And back to the round nose pliers. Round nose pliers here really are important because getting these tabs to be perfectly, now I'm going to squeeze a little bit here, getting these tabs to be perfectly tight is definitely going to be more difficult. I'm going to squeeze a little bit with this, but I'm going to go to round those pliers and basically squeeze this in and round that over or just kind of push it over and the same thing up here. Difficult to see. Sorry, this is a really difficult to see this one right here, but if I have that in the right place, okay, those tabs are folded nicely and I can give them a squeeze now with the round nose pliers to make sure that they are in place and not going anywhere. And now I can do a little bit of forming with the jeweler's anvil. So if I'm just pushing even just a little bit like that, that's that it's not the perfect profile, but it definitely helps to make the shape cleaner. And there we go. That's a pretty good cone using round nose pliers and the anvil. That was actually a little more difficult than what I anticipated it to be. <clears throat> okay, so uh, one thing that I didn't do on this is I need to fold this tab out. This tab needs to be folded out, so I'm going to do so. And then I'm just going to grab some uh, flat nose will work just fine to bring this out. That's where the hose will connect, so that portion has been folded out now. Alright, that's a good looking cone. I'm pretty happy with that. Now it's going to be attached to um, the 35 and 36 piece. I don't think that there... It looks like it's going to be very important that I have the arrows here. And then this piece looks like it's absolutely symmetric. So it's not going to matter whether I have this these tabs um, up or down, as long as they're perpendicular. So that works. Um, these tabs might need to be bent a little bit there. I think that the jeweler's anvil probably brought these tabs out too far. and. Rightly so, it's, I guess that's what it was supposed to do anyways. I, I should have expected that, but I'm just bending them back into place. So these arrows are going forward, and these tabs are perpendicular. And let's refit this. Much better, much, much better. There we go. So I am going to bend these. It says to twist these. I don't want to twist these. I would rather fold them backwards upon themselves. So I'm going to get an X-Acto knife in here, and I'm going to be very careful with the X-Acto knife because I do not want to scratch red. I don't want to scratch a model, period, but it'll definitely stick out with this, this red stuff. So I'm just getting my craft knife in here. And you may have heard me say this already before, but always dull your X-Acto blades or your craft knife. The only thing that you really need is um, an edge that's thin enough to get under tabs that you may have flattened or get into hard, hard to access places. I like to keep the tip sharp because I can push a tab and it grips. It doesn't really, it you know, it kind of digs in and grabs a hold of it. So now that I have those tabs bent outward, I can now, I hope if my head gets in the way, I apologize. I can now get in here and fold these back using long chain nose pliers with a very small tip. Ah! 
there's that scratch I was talking about. Yeah, it happens. I just scratched it. Shoot. All right. I'll make sure my grip is better this time. Out of curiosity, I'm just wondering where this is going to be, though. It looks like it's going to be on the inside. So it's going to be on the opposite side of his wrist. So when you're viewing the model from the front, you're not going to see that scratch. But, oh, man, there it is. Oh, well, what you going to do? Um, I have heard some strategies, and I might try this. Um, you can take Sharpie markers, so get a red Sharpie and just paint that in. That is worth something. Um, it's, it's something that's definitely worth exploring, so I'll take a look at it. Now, these tabs have been folded back, but they haven't really been flattened, so I'm just going to take the jeweler's anvil and press them down. Well, that scratch is right there, making me angry. Ha! Ah, oh well. So, now we're at this point, and this is a bit of complexity in here. So, part number 38. Looks like there's a tapered on one side, going to 39. That comes together. So, part number... These are very delicate pieces. For these, I like to use tweezers that I magnify. And we sell these on 3dmetaltools.com, but this is a magnetizing slash demagnetizing tool. By, by, by running the pliers, or the, the tweezers through the magnetizing side, they will, mag they will be magnetized. And by going through the demagnetized side, they will be demagnetized. I like to have a set that is magnetized and demagnetized so I can use both. So in this situation, picking up piece number 38, I'm just gonna reach over and just tap it with my with my tweezers that are magnetized because I don't want to risk, you know, stick to my finger. I have to take it off the edge of the table and then hope I don't drop it on the floor. The tweezers, I think, are a better option. And then I'll use the tweezers, not necessary really for something that, but for part 39, I'll grab those as well. Now it appears that I want, hmm, the V notch or the non-engraved side is going on the inside of this and I don't believe that that V is there for decoration I believe it's there to give us an indication as to which way this is supposed to go um, actually no because hmm, yes <laughs> so it looks like this is a spot where I'll definitely have to pay I, I need to look at this carefully because if I have this in the wrong orientation, sorry, I'll zoom in. If I have this in the wrong orientation, then I'm sure that this will create an angle on his elbow. You know, and if I have the wrong angle on the elbow, that's what is certainly created here. So it looks to me like the flat surface is going to go against this piece here. And Yes, that is the case. I can tell because, boy, it's really hard to see. But this surface is flat, and this surface is tapered. So the, well, actually, come to think of it, it wouldn't fit any other way anyways. So I think I can confidently make this bend. So here is, here are my flat nose pliers, and I can go ahead. Uh, flat nose pliers, uh, I'm gonna use, because I need to make a perfect uh, 90 degree bend and because the face of these pliers are perfectly 90 degrees I can do this get a grip on it bend this down and I know that that's perfectly 90 degrees much easier than chain nose pliers round nose pliers needle nose pliers flat nose pliers are the way to make right angles and to make them perfect so now part number 39 I doubt that this has any special orientation to it, so I will feel pretty confident in going ahead and inserting my tabs here. All right, that was not easy and I'm sure a twist is fine. I'm gonna use chain nose pliers with the very small tips.
there we go. Not easy at all. And then, looks as if this needs to attach here. So the arrow is pointing in that direction. These go up, and that is attached here. Um, and the tapered end, boy, that's going to be very, very critical that I get that right, because the tapered end, I'm going to go ahead and mock this up the way that I think it's supposed to go. And then I'm going to set it down and have a look forward in the instructions. In order to do that, though, I'm going to have to straighten these tabs. So the way that I'm awfully sure that it needs to go is this orientation here with the tapered side up and And there we go, so there is the V-notch back there. So that's how I think it's supposed to be. But I don't want to commit that to a twist yet. I want to look forward in the instructions and see how the arm is going to mount onto there. So when I look forward here, I can see that this piece going to go on there, then I've got a cone, and the cone goes on there, and then this, 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 this is going to go onto an arm piece. So yes, that that is correct from what I can tell at this point. I want to be very sure though. So I'm looking forward to make sure that this, that I have the tapered side on the top, and the non-tapered side so this is the non-tapered side, and there's the tapered side. I want to make sure that I have that in the right orientation, or else I could be in trouble here. So once again, bear with me as I look forward. Um, yes, that is accurate. OK, so I feel confident going ahead, and I'm just going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to twist these backwards um, against themselves so I'm going to go in this direction and remember that this is this is what led me to scratch the paint last time so I'm going to be really cautious but rather than twisting I'm going to feel better about folding these and I'm folding them back 180 degrees this is this joint is where the um, bicep will go into the body. And so basically, this joint right here is going to hold all of the weight of the arm and the gun. And, well, it's actually, <laughs> there is no gun, it's a shield. Hey, this is Shield Man. What are you thinking? Of course, there's no gun. So now I'm using my jeweler's block to just bend these down. I feel much better about this being a 180 degree fold rather than folding in the other direction, which would only be 90 degrees. It's gonna have a lot more grip. It's gonna have a lot more strength. So set this aside for a second and let me see where I am because this might be a good break uh, spot for, for a break. I need to figure out some dinner soon anyways. Then my brain is getting a little bit stale on this. And that's one thing that I can definitely advise you is um, when you get to a point, you know, this, the rest of this arm, and you were doing these, you know, the, this, this hose, this rolling, the rest of this is critical. If you have some things coming up ahead of you that are really, really critical, and you're starting to get some brain um, fatigue, it might be a good idea to take a break. I mean, I don't think that's why I did that scratch, and I'm hoping that I can use a red Sharpie to fix it. But, you know, it never hurts to kind of get a fresh perspective. So I'm going to go probably call it at this point and then come back, um, figure out some dinner, and maybe I'll be back after dinner to work on this some more. Okay? Thank you.